when I had to live over on the Eastern Shore back in the early 2000s. Um, Glenn was still alive and when he retired he said, where are we going to go? And I said, I want to go home. And he said, me too. Let's go home. And he started to walk away and I looked at him and said, wait a minute, where's home for you? And he said, St. James. And I said, okay, good, that's where I was going to. In October of 1995, this was how I found St. Peter's Church. It had been closed as a parish, and the close sign was just a little further over. I'd been told by friends what a beautiful church this was. I'd come out here, my wife was pregnant with our first child. We climbed up the steps, and we came to the door. My heart was broken. How could the church be closed? But by the grace of God, when I tried the handle, it was open and we went in. That's a story for another day. It's really how I ended up at West Virginia and at the parish of St. James. But the reason the door was open that day was because of a beautiful widow whose name was Agatha, but she went by Pete Murphy. She had the same name as this church. And when this parish had been closed, Pete was given the keys. And for years, every day, she came down from her home up on Fillmore Avenue, unlocked the church, and at the end of the day, locked it back up. She wanted people to be able to pray. We read in the Gospel of Matthew, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. We always think of that as referring to St. Peter, and it does. But today I want to share with you how it, this message belonged to Pete Murphy and to widows here in our parish. So Mrs. Piper, I know that you have still been willing to work during this time and come in and answer the phone and talk to people a lot. And I'm very blessed that Father uh, Leonard allows me to do that when the buildings were mandated to be locked by the bishop. Um, we had a discussion that it would be nice to call your parish and have a live voice. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I'm the live voice on the phone, and then on Thursday and Friday at Santa Bonet. Um, people are coming to the door constantly, dropping off food, dropping off their collection envelopes. Um, so it's, it's a blessing to be here and to be able to still be a service to the parish. This woman called and she gets uh, fresh, farm fresh eggs that have to be washed before you use them because they're not pasteurized and she would take them to the senior center, which of course is closed. So she was looking for an outlet for the eggs. So uh, the call came to St. James. So we told her, of course we'd take her eggs. So every Monday, I go over to Irene's house and pick up whatever amount of eggs she has been given on Sunday. Uh, it's 18 dozen, 24 dozen, and then we send that along to uh, families in need. So that's been a great resource. Um, so also, we have been asking for egg cartons because we have uh, partnered with Skanks. Skanks is a company in uh, Winchester and they sell wholesale and we get most of our paper products from them. So as we were looking for places to buy things wholesale to stretch our dollars as much as we could, I called and we started talking to them on their food side, which we don't usually um, engage with. So we're getting uh, 30 dozen eggs in a box uh, from Skanks, and we get five or six boxes at a time. Thus, we need to break them down to give to families. So um, we have four boxes coming this week, which is about 120 dozen eggs. I have enough egg cartons to break them down. We have another three boxes coming next week, which would be about 90 or 100 dozen eggs, and I will be out of egg cartons. So anybody can drop off egg cartons at the parish office door, we can certainly use them. I have been a parishioner with St. James since 2000, and I decided to retire in 16 and go away to become a sister with the Utah Servants. Our primary mission is prison ministry, but we work with the poor and 
and the homeless. I am associated with the Martinsburg Correction Center up in Martinsburg. Uh, we're not allowed to go in right now because of the coronavirus, but it is a maximum security transition center. And I do a non-denominational Sunday service there. And I've had anywhere from two to 22 men at one time in the service. And it is beautiful as to how they respond. And um, I think that it makes a world of difference. We are the only Catholics going into um, the correctional center. Now we do go into the regional jail and they've been going in there for years. And then also working for Catholic Distance University. Uh, I am working for a company out of Chicago uh, called Adovo and they have a intranet environment set up with 151 prisons nationwide and on those platforms it's a tablet platform and I am converting uh, for CDU the continuing education classes onto that platform and currently we have um, all four pillars of the catechism on that platform and we have uh, you know, ones on Mary, and then we have the prophets, and we have the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we have a pen pal uh, program on there that is connected to the Order of Malta, and we have had to put that on hold so no one can sign up because the Order of Malta notified CDU that they've had over 700 applicants, and they don't have enough of pen pals. It's amazing we ask them what they really want more of and how many are saying they would like the opportunity to go to confession and receive the Eucharist. So we are experiencing just a very small bit of what they experience every day of their life. And a lot of them never get to go to services. I can't get to Mass like everyone. Um, have not received the sacraments like everyone and knowing that I could go out of the diocese to go to Mass or the sacraments, but our bishop has said, you need to stay home. And out of obedience, we need to do that. So, and because I took a role of obedience, I most certainly have to observe that. But it's hard, but I think the thing that I miss most besides Mass and the sacraments is the Adoration Chapel. First of all, could you tell us maybe what this project is? What are we doing? Uh, we are redecorating and, uh, I dare say, redefining the Adoration Chapel. We're soundproofing one of the walls because anybody that's in here when there's a meeting going on in the conference room knows that you can lots of times hear what's going on in the conference room. And we are repainting everything to make it match the narthex and the main church with the, the color. It's going to be such a, a warm, uh, comfortable place to come to. When I come in this chapel, I'm so glad they were able to put a chapel in because when I come in here, there is just, it's, there's just so much love. And I, I hope people realize what they can find here and come back in droves. And I can't wait for the day we can all come back in droves. It's, it's coming. Right now, pray for the conversion of all the inmates and their families, especially during this time, because the ones that are in the Martinsburg Correctional Center, that is a transition center so they do not get to have visitors or anyone come in other than their attorneys. And once they are classified, they get shipped out all over to the different uh, facilities. And because it is a maximum security environment, they are all alone, one to a cell. And my understanding is now that they do not get out at all. Their meals and everything are always served to them that way, but I don't think they're getting out at all. So pray for them, pray for their families. Pray for the staff. They're God's children, just like we are. And we have to love them and we, can't, we can love them in our hearts, 
by praying for them and knowing that everybody does something wrong. And just like Christ said when he wrote in the sand, you know, cast the first stone. So none of us should cast a stone because there's not one of us that has not sinned. Richard liked to work behind the scenes. He never wanted to be out in front of anybody. So uh, he would come in early and clean and, and you know do his thing with that. He would love this project because he would be pulling uh, bags of peanut butter and boxes that are left at the door and, and bringing them downstairs or out to St. Michael's or wherever they were going to be to be sorted. So uh, this would have been right up his alley to, uh, to work behind the scenes. And, and there's so many people working behind the scenes. It's, it's kind of like our mosaics in church. I was thinking about that this morning, that um, there's a lot of little colored pieces. Individually, they're not going to look like so much, but together they make a beautiful mosaic. So that's really what we're all doing. We all have a little piece of the puzzle. And when it comes together to the food giveaways that are, that are huge, it's a beautiful thing. At that time, as the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because the widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. This passage from the beginning of the, or not the beginning, from, start over. At that time, as the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because the widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. This passage from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter six, refers to the calling of the first deacons to take care of widows. It has been a strange thing in my life here in this parish, because as you've seen today, again and again and again, it's the widows who are loving the church, who are taking care of those in need, who are helping build it up. Because that woman, Agatha Pete Murphy, was willing to hold the key and keep this church open. My wife and I came in the door that day we walked around the corner and she fell on her knees as I am right now. She looked up at the cross. She said, Lord, I didn't realize what you had done for us. And we looked at each other and said, we should move here. My beginning in West Virginia was an invitation from a widow that I did not know, who was willing to hold the key and to keep the church open. How is the Lord asking you to keep the church open today?